Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to yet another episode of Little Modular. Today, I present you CV Trinity by Czech company Bastl. I can't really think of any other module that would offer so much flexibility and so many modulation sources in such a small package. Yes, it's not a super easy module at first to operate, but once you wrap your head around the logic behind the main panel, all the controls and the layout, it's really easy to operate and it's just super useful in any system. And actually this might be the only modulation source you will ever need, especially if you have a small or mid-sized system. And one more thing, before you start complaining about the wooden panel, that might not look too good next to your other modules with the metal faceplates, I'm really glad to inform you that Bastl is offering now all of their modules with some really nice super sleek aluminum faceplates. Let me just present you the overall functions. CV Trinity offers you six independent modulation sources. Each of the six channels can be either envelope generator, advanced LFO or a CV recorder or automation so called. Let's take a look at the front panel. As you can see it's divided in two parts, the upper part with all the jacks and the lower part for controlling the algorithms. As you might already noticed, all of the jacks and the main select buttons are formed in triad sort of arc form. So there are three buttons right here, two rows of input jacks and two rows of three output jacks. So how do you choose a certain output and an algorithm for that output? We need to choose the row first with this button right here, the small button with two arrows up and down. As you can see, when I press it, the LED here changes, indicating that I have chosen the upper row or in our case, we need to choose the lower row. Now with these three buttons, you choose which of the outputs right here you would like to edit. So the third jack, the second jack and the first jack. Now you probably notice that as I switch the sources, this LED right here changes its color. Each of these colors means a different algorithm. So for example, when I choose the first output, it's blue, meaning that I have enabled an envelope generator on it. I can change the algorithm with this mode button right here. When I press it, it changes to red and green. And again, blue. Green indicates that I'm in the LFO mode. Now let's go back to the first jack. You operate on each of the algorithms with those three knobs. They have a different functions depending on the algorithm. For example, for the envelope to work, we need a trigger on its input because each of these outputs has a dedicated input. This output has an input here, this output has an input here and so on and so forth. We need to stick a trigger. In my case, I have a square LFO from Batumi inserted right here. When I open my mixer, you can hear that I have an envelope generator, which in my case is opening a VCA. Few words above the patch, I have a twin waves oscillator going through Belgrade filter and that is connected to a VCA which is triggered by this envelope generator right here. And that's what the controls do for the envelope generator. This one right here, the main one, is responsible for attack as you can hear. This knob is responsible for decay and release. It's in one knob. Let's set it to moderate release. And this knob is a sustain knob. But it could also be a hold knob. Now we are entering the area which could be potentially a confusing one. So pay attention. Remember that I have showed you how to choose different outputs for editing. 
Now each of the algorithms on each of the outputs can have some additional options. We are right now on the first output and envelope generator. Now when you press and hold the function button right here, each of those knobs sets three different options for that algorithm. When I release the function button, we are in uh, the output selection mode. And when I press it, we are accessing different options once again. So when I press it and I press this right here, I'm setting the hold mode. So when the LED is off, we are in the uh, attack release mode. When I press it and it's lit, this knob sets the uh, time of hold time. So you can hear that the envelope acts differently. Okay. When I switch it back, it acts again as a sustain and release. The middle button enables either standard mode or loop mode. So the whole envelope cycle is restarted each time it receives a gate. Let's get back to the standard mode. The third option right here sets whether the response of the envelope generator is linear, like so, or exponential. Let's leave it on linear and let's leave the other options untouched. When I release it, we go back to output selection mode. Let's say I would like to animate this patch. As you can see right here, I have a cable patched to volt per octave input on Belgrad. And I'm going to patch this cable to second output on the CV Trinity. Let's switch to the second output so we can edit it. You can see right here that the LED became red, meaning I'm in the recording mode. In the recording mode, those three knobs serve a different purpose. By the way, you don't have to memorize all of this stuff because all the functions are written on the front panel here, as well for the additional options. These are all written here on the buttons, so we don't have to remember it. The most important thing is this knob right here. If you want to record some CV into it, you just press this leftmost button right here and you twist this middle knob. Okay, that's it. This knob right here sets how many steps this recording will have. It can have from 1 to 32 steps max. In this position is the shortest. If you turn it clockwise, it goes to the full 32 steps. Okay, this knob right here sets whether the pattern is stepped, as you can hear right now, or if you go clockwise, interpolate it so it's smoother, as you can hear right now. Just like with the envelope generator, you can access additional options with the function button right here. The first button right here tells you whether you want to use the internal clock for the pattern to advance or external clock. This is important because if you set the internal clock, it's all cool. You can record everything just like I did it a while ago. But if it's set to external clock and there is nothing patched into the corresponding input, in our case the second input, it won't work. Just like right now, it's not working. Okay, I can record it doesn't do anything. I can of course patch the internal clock right here just for fun, okay? Now it's working, but it's stupid to do so. We can just switch this function on so it's using the internal clock. The middle button is responsible for clearing the buffer. So if you want to cancel the recording, you just press function again and clear it. And last but not least is the uh, third option which allows you to use all 32 steps or just even numbers. This is useful because if you want to use that in a typical 
electronic music patterns like two, four, eight steps, you can activate the filter and it won't use the odd numbers. Let's switch to the third output on the lower row and let's set an LFO here, which is already set. So let's get back to the LFO, green LED. But now, instead of using this output, we will use a special output, which I have not told you about yet. As you notice, it sounds identical to the output I have just chosen. It's called Select Out, but I like to call it Chameleon, because this output spits out a CV signal of the selected output. So, for example, if now I choose the second output, this one, the copy of this signal will appear here. This is very useful because with that output you can modulate some parameter with different algorithms without switching the cable. A very nice trick. So we can set up an LFO here or a different LFO with different speed or a CV recorder, an NLFO, and so on and so forth. So now I will explain what each of these knobs does in the LFO mode. First of all, we have the rate. If it's a free running LFO, it's just a typical frequency. If it's synchronized to a clock, it serves as a clock divider. Knob right here chooses a wave shape. So we can choose a triangle, a ramp, sawtooth and so on and so forth but the most interesting ones are the two last it's a stepped random and a looped step random which will loop the last 32 steps if you want to make those waves more interesting you would use this knob it introduces some spikes and some beat reduction to this wave making it more unpredictable or in the stepped random mode it makes this smoother or stepped. So it's very flexible. But there are a few other options, just like with the other algorithms, that you can access with the function. When you press this, it's either free running or synchronized. After that, you can either operate it in a standard mode or in a pingable mode. It's similar to how the classical PEG module by 4MS works. It means that if you set at least two pulses to the corresponding input, then the LFO sets its rate to the time in between those pulses. In that case, the synchronization to the main clock will be disabled and this knob will affect the phase shift relative to the clock on the CV input. And the third option here switches between ranges. You can set the LFO to a short range and a long range. There's one more thing that you need to be aware about the LFO. When it is in the uh, synchronized mode, each of the column of the outputs is um, phase shifted. So these two outputs are with no phase offset. These two outputs are offset by 90 degrees and the last column so this and this one are offset by 180 degrees so you can actually use those LFOs if you of course set all of those outputs to the LFO mode you can set it up so it acts sort of like a quadrature LFO now there are some other options that you need to know once you have set up all those outputs and different algorithms and the settings you like you can save that to a general snapshot or preset and that's done by those two leftmost and rightmost buttons function and record once you do that it's stored when you reset the system all those settings will be uh, recalled there are two jacks i have not told you about yet the main output and the uh, input clock right here these are normalized so now once you know how the whole thing works like let's put it into some serious action we have our envelope let's repatch it and let's use the second we're choosing the second output from the lower row let's adjust the rate 
Okay, let's see if it's synchronized. Let's synchronize it. Okay. Let's make it a little bit faster. Now, let's use the third output, but let's use it in the uh, CD record mode. And let's modulate the FM in on Belgrad. Okay, let's record something. Let's let's check if it's if it's synchronized to internal clock. Yes, it is. Now let's record something. Okay. All right. Let's set it so it's smooth and let's set the pattern around the middle maybe okay and now let's modulate some of the parameters on twin waves first I will modulate the uh, volt per octave let's switch to the upper row we have an LFO on the first jack so that's what we Okay, let's slow it down. Okay, let's choose some other wave. Some step random. Okay, that sounds bonkers, but why not? Now I want to modulate the first parameter. We modulate it with the second LFO. Let's set it so it's not synced. Okay. And let's set it to a slower mode. And a typical simple wave. And let's use the third output to switch algorithms on twin waves. That's actually a new feature on twin waves on the 1.13 firmware and I will tell you about it on the, uh, another video on twin waves because it has many new features added in the recent firmware revisions. Let's connect the third and final output to the FM in on the uh, twin waves and uh, we have chosen the option to choose the presets, the algorithms on twin waves with the uh, external CV. So now you can see the algorithms on uh, twin waves are changing as I applied LFO to it. And let's set some other wave maybe and make it a little bit slower so we can hear different algorithms changing. And you can already hear there is some sonic mayhem going on and it's all done with just this module just with uh, CB Trinity animating the Belgrad filter and uh, also animating the uh, twin waves and also firing up the VCA with the uh, envelope generator. You can of course cross modulate those outputs. You can modulate some LFO with the output of other LFO or other CB recorder. This module is so useful. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg, what I just showed you here. So what can I say? I recommend this to you tenfold, hundredfold. I have many modulation sources, but that's the one I tend to use mostly. Definitely give it a try, give it a spin. Uh, and I bet you will love it. As usual, if you like that video, please share, subscribe and spread the good word. Bye bye, take care, till next time and happy wiggling!